Hello and welcome to the channel. This is your host, D-Day, bringing you Enigmatica 2 Expert Mode. If you're enjoying the series, please hit the like button, subscribe, and most importantly, leave a comment. Thank you so much and enjoy the show. Alrighty, so I'm trying a different, uh, uh, a different approach from now on. I'm trying to, since I'm playing for one hour a day, I'm going to try to, uh, Still play for one hour, but split the one hour into two 30-minute episodes to see if uh, more people would be interested in watching shorter videos. Uh, so instead of an hour video of me accomplishing three things, it can be two 30-minute episodes and uh, of me accomplishing one thing at a time. So it, you know, like people can skip the episodes that they are not interested in. Uh, and you know, give my episodes a chance uh, if they're seeing it's an hour and they don't even want to give it a chance. So, last episode we did the void ore miner. Uh, I left off on this. I was working on empowering the uh, diamantines. I put in it's a stack of blocks of diamond shot through the atomic reconstructor. Goes into the middle. I did a stack. I got a stack of manilium. Uh, I went to Trin's Astral Sorcery, uh, which I ended up doing like an automated uh, coal dropper to her ender endo flame. Made a whole bunch of mana. I dropped a stack of uh, diamonds in, got mana diamonds. The zirconium, it comes from uh, the rock crusher crushing diorite, I believe. Let me make sure. I don't want to say anything wrong. Zirconium. Crushed zirconium dust comes from the rock crusher crushing diorite. Yeah, it's the third output. So that's I th threw in a stack of that. My problem was I needed uh, malachite, which malachite is biome specific. I found that out when I was looking for sapphires and realized that I had not run into any sapphires. I found out sapphires are ocean biome specific. So I set my digital miner in the ocean to get some sapphires way back when for uh, a recipe I already forgot. It was a while ago. But malachite is the, the last thing that's required to make empowered uh, diamantine, which we now have 43 because I had 43 uh, I had 43 malachite saved up and I'll teleport over to the space station to show y'all uh, how I got the malachite. Uh, but before I do that, I want to put this into the system and then work on what I've been wanting for a long time now, the teleport staff. This is so much fun for me. I played with it in Continuum for a really long time. Uh, let's grab one more of these. Put this back into the system, please, and then... Let's drop two of those stacks. Teleport staff. All right, grab one more block. And then, is that enough now? Yes, thank you. And what's awesome is wireless RF from the Flux network will keep this teleport staff topped off all the time. So I'm, I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm the type of player to always be switching. Like if I'm traveling and I'm holding the long sword, I always roll the scroll wheel to my long sword when I move. See like for some weird reason, I don't know why, like I don't like moving around with the, uh, the wireless crafting terminal open. Like it feels weird. Like I feel like I need to have a tool in my hand when I move. I, I know it's weird. Uh, this tool, uh, covers that, I guess, OCD or that tick that I have. Um, and it's fun. Like, I absolutely love this. This is the travel tool for me. I love this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I use the Enderbook to travel, you know, to quick travel. But when I'm in close quarters, you know, oh my god, I just love, I love moving around like this. So this is just so much quicker for me. And then, of course, yeah, I need to get used to uh, traveling with this bad boy again. But I love, absolutely love the teleport staff. It's one of my favorite toys to play with. Uh, let's grab 
Let's put you back, because I know it gets stuck in the system. Oh, they, I need to make sure later to torch off the uh, Void Ore Miner Tier 6, because I knocked out that wall and there are torches over there. But yeah, uh, before I uh, leave y'all hanging, uh, let us let me show you how I ended up doing the Malachite. So now that I'm wearing my helmet, <laughs> I can teleport. Because uh, right now it's, it's a closed building and I really should move all of this downstairs, but I want to try and not double double touch, triple touch items. Like I've already moved it from down there to up here and I'm planning on moving it from here to back here, but I don't want to like move it another time just for convenience right now. Uh, as soon as, uh, what's it called? As soon as I uh, feel comfortable in this area, I'll uh, build the top part because there's parts of the space station or spaceship that if I build it before uh, other parts, I'm pretty sure all of the nerds out there will be like, that's what it is. I know what it is. So I'm trying to leave it very vague until I have it completed. So I don't want people to, to guess like way before. Uh, so this is what I ended up doing. This is what I, I, I had to mess around a lot to get this to, to work. But I'm hoping that an episode of me explaining how I put this together is just as good as me making the items and placing them down. If not better, hopefully, because I've already got it to work. So from here, I have uh, a, a smart cable that holds eight channels coming from the backbone, 32 channels of the full uh, uh, ME system. That's traveling eight channels this way. I have a linked by P2P, so it's going only one of the eight channels is the P2P. I linked it here. I put in a dense cable, which can hold 32, the full P2P that's attached to the ME side. So this, I have a one eight channel P2P in magenta coming out. That's covering all of these machines. They're all thermal expansion. I wanna try to keep each room uniform to the mod. Uh, so that's those eight. And then up here, I have one right now going in purple because these are my two favorite colors and because they're different colors they won't connect so the lines won't get crossed. Purple goes up here, it's only using one channel right now it, and the channel is an ME export bus uh, and inside the export bus is, on, is I put in end stone. So all of the end stone in the ME system is coming here to this export bus which plugs it into a pulverizer and then what's really cool is the pulverizer see it just did it uh, a pulverizer end stone let's so end stone is probably the best way we'll go end stone we'll do you for use on end stone and then let me find the pulverizer there we go. So the pulverizer gets fed all of the endstone in the system by the ME export. It gets turned into crushed endstone, which I have the output set that it outputs down, uh, auto output enabled. And that is a crafter tier one, which we have on pattern right now. And as soon as it get, got nine crushed end stone, I made a pattern here, hit apply for compressed ender gravel. I believe it's compressed ender gravel. Let me go, let me make 100% sure. Pulverizer, crushed end stone, compressed ender gravel. So it, the crafter makes this one item, compressed ender gravel. Then what I did is all of them are plugged in with Ender Energy Conduits, of course, that's how the power is getting transferred. And the power is coming in from a flux point. So the the nuclear craft fusion reactor is powering the space station in random points. So that's the power. Also, the power goes down and connects all of the thermal machines as well. Then I have an item conduit coming out of the crafter set 
to green extract always active and then it plugs it into the auto heavy sieve which I've been laughing about since the beginning. Uh, I've got this at the very beginning of playing this mod pack as a quest reward and I never put it into play and now I'm like come on come on put the auto heavy sieve into play. So here it is the one auto heavy sieve that I got from quest reward. This one is inserting on green extracting on brown always active so what happens is uh, with compressed ender gravel so end stone use the pulverizer crushed end stone use turns into compressed ender gravel use in the heavy sieve with a Diamond Stiffened Mesh gets you all of the gems from Biomes of Plenty. Uh, I, I'm not sure what the difference is between Heavy Sieves and uh, the regular Sieves, but the heavy Auto Heavy Sieve is what I had in the Quest Reward, and I believe the Heavy Sieves have a higher chance, because these all say 7 times 5%. Which I'm not sure. Like, is it five percent or is it uh, seven times five percent? But it will. The void resource miner finds end end stone, puts it into the ME system by uh, Ender chest. The export bus puts it into the pulverizer, turns it into uh, the compressed Ender gravel, and then it gets uh, sieved for all of the gems. And then the extract on brown here uh, comes down into the nearest uh, ME interface with an insert on brown, always active. So it goes right back into the system. So that's how I got the malachite that I need for the empowered diamantine recipe. And now I have the teleport staff, which is amazing. I love it. Uh, and let's see, there was one other thing I wanted to show y'all. So here are the two, I have two ender chests with speed upgrades so that it can dump them out faster because I realized that the, uh, the uh, void resource miner and the void ore miner were making resources faster than can be pulled out by one cable. And I wanted it to be, I'm, I'm, I have a thing about symmetry. So I made two with full extract, it's the same chest, and that it ends up working. So now we're getting Draconium Ore because of the uh, the Void Ore Miner. And let's see, I wanted this to go here. That'll go there. And then the Draconium Ingots will go here. Here is the Draconium Dust because that's what it turns into when you break it. But look, uh, I started this episode right after the following episode and we already had uh, a good amount of uh, of draconium so that is probably five to ten minutes worth of the void ore miner tier six being on with mostly with 12 speed upgrades uh, accuracy upgrades don't count because the laser lens is not purple but that's five to ten minutes worth of AFK or playing the game. Like, Draconium's not going to be a problem. I don't even think I'm going to need to put this down and use my fortune pick on them and just straight up process this. And if I, if I run out, like, I don't know if I need that much. Or I could just AFK overnight, which I do anyways, or AFK while I'm at work, which I do anyways. So, uh, that is pretty sweet. I think we're all, all we need, Draconium or. That's all set and done, and we're ready to move into the uh, uh, the draconic evolution. So that is super exciting for me because I have not ever made it this far. So draconic evolution. I'm looking I'm really looking forward to making these tools even though like I really don't need them anymore <laughs> they're pretty OP but 
working draconic evolution here i'm really stoked with how flashy the uh the energy core is i'm planning on putting that one right above these these the uh the mineshaft base that's made out of glass so that's super like standing out and yeah bragging rights i'm totally gonna brag about making it to draconic evolution and yeah like i i want to open up the gate to bragging rights so that i can see what i need to build so yeah like the next step will be draconic evolution it'll be the uh making the draconic core so let's see what the draconic core requires and then let me set this with a so we need draconium blocks which are now not a problem because the void ore miner is getting those uh, we need plutonium, which is not a problem because the extreme reactor is making uh, cyanite, which I can then turn into plutonium, which I can then turn into plutonium. So that's not a problem. Litharite crystals, that's a joke because the void, void ore miner tier 1 was getting that for us already, and we have a ridiculous amount of them. Elite plating, I have those on, uh, on autocraft, which uh, boron... Let's go backwards. Uranium is no problem. Sulfur is no problem. Tough alloy is no problem. All of this stuff is on autocraft. The only issue is the crystal binder uh, because of the calcium sulfate, which I'm planning on doing ME export buses attached to the, the part that needs sulfur and the part that needs fluorite. And then we're just going to have these cal calcium sulfates rolling in. So we'll be able to make these platings, no problem. Dislocator. This is kind of disappointing as well. The dislocator, iron ender, blaze powders we now have from the the mob farm, no problem. Uh, ender pearls as well, draconium dust, no problem. We have that from the void ore miner tier six. Genetics processor, uh, pure nether quartz we have those on autocraft. Printed engineering circuits we have those on autocraft. Advanced control circuits we have those on autocraft. So let's jump back home real quick. This does not look uh, too intimidating to me. So let's make our first uh, draconium block and call it a day. <laughs> Sorting facility. So let's see how much of the draconium do we already have? <laughs> I must have gotten the dislocator as a quest reward way back when and I didn't know what it was and I learned later you know that you use it to to put pedestals and teleport but I was having too much fun and being a noob so let's make the uh, this genetics processor okay we're only missing the left and right items which are the advanced circuits the advanced circuits let's just make 10 And bam, 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 bam. Swoopity whoop. And that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Boom. Gate. Gate Draconic Evolution. I am so stoked. And I'm going to claim this one because I don't, I want these to be green. When it's stuff like this, I'll keep it. But when it's one blue one, I'll change it. So yeah, like, it's going to be hard for me to go backwards. I'm doing all of this tech-heavy endgame stuff here, and I s totally skipped over Batania. So I need to I need to jump into Batania, at least open the gate for it. But I know there's some mystical agriculture stuff that requires a lot of astral sorcery and Batania. So I shouldn't have skipped over it, but I did. So it's going to kind of going to be a little silly me going backwards but I have to go back to Batania uh, I might play with Draconic for a little bit I got the dragon heart from killing the end dragon but also what's really cool about the uh, the uh, replicator is you can put a dragon heart into the scanner and you can replicate dragon hearts with the with UU matter also the fire and ice dragons when you slay them uh, they give you dragon hearts. Let me see if I have any of those. Yep. So they give you fire dragon hearts because I haven't found any ice dragons yet. 
uh, let me show you on one of them. So I'm not sure if these are required for anything else. You can change the Fire and Ice Dragons to the Draconic Evolution Dragon Hearts. So you can do it like that as well. Uh, oh wow, you got three. Could have sworn there was only one. We made one. Oh. Loot chest and two Draconic cores. So, yeah, uh, in an effort to keep the episodes l shorter, uh, I'm going to stop at that. We made the teleport staff, which is super fun. I love it. And we open up the gate to uh, uh, Draconic Evolution. And I could have sworn that in Continuum, it let me... Okay, yeah, It uh, if it's rezzed. It lets you teleport 100 blocks in a straight line, as long as there's something in the way. So like, if I'm pointing into the abyss like I am right now, it's not going to teleport. But if I let this res, like the, the world res, as long as I'm clicking, it can reach. Which, Angel Ring and the teleport staff can cover a lot of distance, but I'm not even sure if my computer can handle this. <laughs> but yeah, I'm rambling. Uh, teleport staff and uh, Draconic Core, gate towards Draconic Evolution. Uh, I'm super excited. Thank you all so much for watching, and tune in tomorrow.